start in Nigeria. The country has deployed fighter jets and surveillance aircraft to search for members of the militant group, the Avengers, in the country's oil-rich Niger Delta. Now, local newspaper Vanguard reports that police actually swooped uh, into the Kurutia community as early as 4 a.m. on Monday in search of the Avengers. Uh, the militant group shut down operation at Chevron's Escravos uh, terminal and are blamed for cutting Nigeria's oil production by 2.2 million barrels per day uh, from 2.2 million barrels per day to just over 1 million. Now, in a statement on Sunday, President Mohamedou Buhari said that the government will hold talks with leaders from the region, but an army crackdown will continue. The way forward is to take a sustainable approach to address the issues that affect the Niger Delta communities. Re-engineering the amnesty programs is an example of this. The recent spate of attacks by militants disrupting oil and power installations will not distract us from engaging leaders in the region in addressing Niger Delta problems. If the militants and vandals are testing our resolve, they are much mistaken. We shall apprehend the perpetrators and their sponsors and bring them to justice. Now, the militant problem in the Niger Delta region is not new. In fact, Delta residents, most of them are poor, have long demanded a greater share of oil revenues in Nigeria, since most of Nigeria's crude comes from the region. Now, the latest militant group uh, call themselves the Niger Delta Avengers. Of course, the last ones were called uh, MEND, and here's more on them. The Avengers and other militants who say they are fighting for a greater share of oil profits, an end to pollution and independence for the region, have intensified attacks in recent months, pushing oil output to its lowest in more than 20 years and compounding the problems faced by Africa's largest economy. Obasanjo started the peace process in the Niger Delta and that process saw certain conditions put before him. He left. President Yaradua consolidated on it, achieved an amnesty for agitators at that time, and agreed to reach, to fulfill the agreements that were reached on the table. Unfortunately, he died, and President Gulag Jonathan took over. Under the amnesty, thousands have received job training, but those who have finished the lessons have struggled to land jobs. These same people say the only way to bring about peace is to address the root causes of militancy. We should guide them, all these uh, interest groups, in the way forward. And the way forward is to have these guys properly guided, which includes education, training, job opportunities, and so on. Not all former militants direct their ire at the government and oil companies. Kara Edoro, a former militant, said the latest insurgents had not benefited from the amnesty because senior militants hijacked the money and benefits. Most of those leaders, they won't go back to the crib because what they have, nobody wants to die and leave all these big houses and the scars behind. They are living very well, so they will never ever go back to the crib. One year on, with the president who has never visited the Delta vowing to crush pipeline saboteurs without focusing on developing the area, the reality is that it's highly likely that more militant groups will arise. Lindim Tongana, CCTV. Now, Chidi Nwaunu, a security, security analyst and British Army Reserve officer, joins us in London. Deji Badmus uh, also joins us in Lagos with some insight into this crisis. And Deji, I'll just start with you. Now, the federal government uh, deployed fighter jets and surveillance aircraft uh, this morning, as we just heard. Any updates on the situation so far? Well, thank you very much, Uche. What we know is that uh, the military is maintaining a very strong presence in the Niger Delta. It is actually concentrating 
in Delta State, in the south-south of the country, uh, basically uh, concentrating on uh, Baramatu Kingdom. Baramatu Kingdom is actually where one of the famous ex-militant comes from. I'm talking about Tom Polo, who has been declared wanted by the EFCC, of course, not in connection with what is going on now. Uh, we know the military is maintaining a strong presence there. It is in that area that the military actually arrested 10, pers uh, ten persons yesterday. Those 10 persons have been paraded by security agents, even though there's still no conclusive confirmation now that they are members of uh, the Niger Delta Avenger. So uh, a very strong presence there. And as you've been reporting, of course, the military deploying um, surveillance uh, aircraft there uh, to monitor the uh, oil installations in that uh, community and uh, we understand uh, the military is still there. They, they haven't actually left that community, Uche. Mm. Well, Ch Chidi, welcome to the show. What are your thoughts on how the government uh, is handling the situation this time around as, of course, a security expert? Hi, thanks for having me, Uche. Um, just looking at the government's reaction, the initial reaction was a little bit disjointed, but if we analyze their response so far, you can see that there's been three key elements. As the military has been alluded to, there's been a strong military buildup. You know, aircraft and boats and troops have been moved down to the uh, Niger Delta, the Delta states and Bielsa states in particular. But at the same time, there's also been a kind of a civil political discourse. So a lot of engagement with Niger Delta leaders, even ex-militants. So the, the curious factor of Tompolo himself uh, coming out against the Niger Delta Avengers. And then there's a third aspect, which is developmental. So uh, as part of Buh uh, President Buhari's speech, he mentioned that he will be visiting the Niger Delta for the first time, uh, Ogoni land, going there on the 2nd of June to launch the Ogoni cleanup. So these three elements are actually quite uh, are perfect in terms of counterinsurgency efforts. Uh, the devil obviously is in the detail how they're actually executed. Right. And Deji, can you highlight the extent uh, of the impact that uh, the activities of these Niger, Niger Delta Avengers uh, has had on Nigeria's economic situation? And of course, we also hear oil companies are beginning to suspend operations in the country. Uh, give us some insight into the extent of the damage. Well, Uche, the fact is that these guys have caused a lot of damage uh, within a very short period of time. Uh, I'll give you, uh, let me just give you a clear instance. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, said Nigeria was losing around 800,000 barrels per day as a result of the activities of uh, the Niger Delta of Vengeance. And uh, just a couple of days ago, on Thursday to be precise, uh, they carried out another attack uh, around the Nimbi uh, trunk line, you know, the Nimbi trunk line in Bielsa State. Now, that trunk line actually produces around 600,000 barrels of oil per day. Now, you take that out of um, what we're supposed to produce, you have a clear picture of what this would mean for the Nigerian economy. Now, take a look at the budget. The budget, uh, the, the production benchmark for the budget is 2.2 million barrels per day. As a matter of fact, this year, Nigeria has not been able to attain 2.2 million. The highest Nigeria has done is 1.7. But uh, with what has happened, the attacks we have seen so far, maybe by the time uh, the latest figure will be released, we probably might be doing something less than 1 million or maybe in the region of 1 million, and that is very bad. The fact is that with what is going on, Uche, it will be a miracle for the government to be able to deliver on even 70% of its budget. I mean, there's no question at all, because if money is not coming from oil and the price of oil continues to remain uh, low, then it, it will be difficult. It would mean a lot for this economy. And I think as the days, goes on, as the days go on, I should say, uh, we we'll begin to feel more of the impact. But for now, things are really bad. And that's why the government is doing everything to stop the attacks. Mm. Now, Chidi, let's, let's, going forward now, the last time Nigeria faced this situation was with the movement of the emancipation of the Niger Delta or MEND. We saw billions of naira spent on an amnesty deal. What are your thoughts on some of the solutions this government can employ going forward? Well, that, it's a very interesting question because if you look at the amnesty program for, for men, it was an extremely imperfect solution to the problem because all it created was a reward for violence and a reward for extremism and without any balance to reward those who um, s didn't take up arms. So the normal person uh, in the Niger Delta who didn't take up arms and didn't fight the government remained as poor and as uh, underdeveloped as, as before. 
whilst a few militants became stupendously rich. So that solution would not apply today and should never be applied anywhere. I mean, there could never be a reward for taking up arms against the state. And looking in particular at the uh, Niger Delta Avengers and looking at their website, their Twitter feed, their, their complaints have been very, very you know, one-sided. It's generally much less about the uh, deprivation of the Delta, more about specific uh, issues like um, the trial of Colonel Dasuki or the, um, the seizing of assets for uh, Tompolo and things like this, or the lack of uh, access to the amnesty. So it's... It is at its most basic extortion, you know, extort, using violence to extort money from the government. So the solution f going forward, as you know, as alluded to earlier, are going to be increasing, you know, the development of the Niger Delta. Things like the Ogoni cleanup, expanding that across the Niger Delta, and then incre increasing opportunities for people in the Niger Delta, either through transport, education, healthcare, and not narrow um, amnesty programs paying off militants not to attack the pipelines. Because as we've seen just in this case, within the past five days, a new group has grown, has just uh, popped up, the, the Red Egbisu Water Lands, a, an unknown group, and they're now claiming you know, attacks on pipelines. If you pay this lot off, another, another lot will pop up you know, in their shadows. Mm. Well, many thanks uh, to both of you, of course, for those insights. Chidi Nwaunu joining us in London, Deji Badmus uh, in Lagos.